Well, you guys, if you're new to network attached storage devices, then you need to do these security checks right now. These are essential security checks you should be running and making sure that you have enabled all of these security settings on your device to keep you safe. So first off, let's go to control panel. And once we're inside here, we're going to go to user and groups. The very first thing that you need to do is disable the admin account. This is the system default user account, which is called admin, and it has full administrator privileges. You really want to be disabling this admin account as soon as you set it up and create your own account and give that administrator privileges. This is the system default user account, which is called admin, and you don't want to be using this or leaving it enabled. I also disable the guest account here, as you can see, and there's only one account, which is the account that I created and give this administrator privileges. And again, we can set up some permissions and stuff like that. This is the way that you should be setting up your NAS. And this is what you should be doing on all uh, network attached storage devices, whether it be Synology, QNAP. The next thing you want to do is change the password and create a super strong password. This can be a mixture of digits, letters, special characters, and other complex passwords that you want to use. You can set a, a particular number of uh, letters that need to be used or characters, like say 11 or 12 or something like that to force people to use this. And I'll show you how to set that up. And I'll show you how to set this up a little bit later on in a video when we go into the more detailed password settings that you can use on your NAS. So let's go ahead and go to the next section under the security tab here. And inside the security tab, there's a bunch of stuff in here that we can make changes to. So the first thing that we want to do here in the control panel in security is go to firewall and you want to make sure that your firewall is enabled. This is important. This is going to keep you safe. You can also create a firewall profile. This can be set up as a firewall rule to prevent unauthorized sign-ins and you can take full control of what services have access to. So it's a much better way of setting up your device by going into your firewall settings and setting up a firewall profile for yourself. Next up, we're going to go to the advanced section here, and we're under the uh, section where it says Spectre and also Meltdown Protection. Enable this if you want to have full protection and also avoid any sort of vulnerabilities. This does have a small impact on your device, but it's also advisable to enable this feature. You can read the security advisor from uh, Synology and QNAP and other manufacturers of NAS drives, and you can basically click on that and read it. It just gives you a full report of what they actually find, and it will give you some understanding of what Meltdown Inspector is. And you can see here, these vulnerabilities allow local users to obtain sensitive information. So whether you want to enable that feature is entirely up to you. Uh, it is a security feature, but it does have a little bit of an impact on the system, just like it would do on a Windows-based system. So that is right down the bottom there. Also, what we're going to do next is move on to the next section here, and we're going to go to protection, and we need to enable the auto block. You can see I've already got this enabled, and this will block uh, login attempts on this device. And you can see I've got this set to 10. You can set this to how many you like, and you can put it in the here for so many minutes what you want to set yours as now this is important because what this does is this will block ips that have failed one or too many uh, authentication attempts to sign into your device so if they're trying to log into your device and they keep failing to log in it will then block them and blacklist them and this is important uh, because you obviously don't want someone probing away now also we've got denial of service here which is a dos protection and you can enable this feature if you wish. This stops people from taking your device offline, having malicious attacks done to you over the internet. You can enable that feature as well. That's another protective layer right there, which you can use on your NAS. So now we've got those settings set up. Again, you can adjust your settings to your liking, uh, but basically I'm going to leave those as is. We're going to go to the account tab now, and this is where we can have a secure sign-in and this means that we can enable uh, two-factor authentication for the following users. You can set this up 
or administrator groups or all users, or you can set this up for a specific type of user group uh, inside here. So you can see here it's saying the email notification service is not enabled. Would you like to enable it? So let's just jump over to the notifications area and set that up first, and then we can come back and set up the two factor authentication. This is going to prevent people from gaining access to your account. They would need to go through this two factor authentication. So let me not save this right now and just jump over to the enable email notifications. Right here, you can enable this feature, and you will need to enable this feature to have two factor authentication. From here, it's going to ask you for the recipient's email address. You can put in your email address so you can set it up. Now, this is uh, entirely up to you which email service provider you use, whether it will be uh, Gmail or Google or whether it will be some other type of email address that you have, whether it will be a personal email address, you can put in right down here. And there's service providers here of Outlook, Q&Q, &Q, and also we have custom SMTP server. You'll need to know all your details to set this up. That's important because obviously this is going to be a, a good security measure. And you can obviously send a welcome message to that new user. And once you've got this set up, you'll be able to send a test email to that account. So let's go back once we've got this set up. I've already set mine up now, and uh, I'm going to progress with the two factor authentication setup here. So we can go to all users, or you can put in a particular user here that you want to use. So let's go ahead and put it onto all users here. And uh, you can see it's going to enforce all users. And also in your personal settings, you'll see a little line down the bottom that says you can set up two factor authentication for your account in your personal settings. And this is the good thing about Synology. They have these little links that take you to the location for you to set it up. So this is why I like this particular type of device. Down the bottom here, you can see we also have account protection here. If you want to enable this, you can do. I'm not going to enable this part, but it just gives you some uh, other areas which you can uh, make settings of. For, for instance, untrusted clients and other things like that. But right here is that personal setting here where we can click on it. So let me go ahead and click on this here. Or you can use your personal setting up the top right hand side here. And as you can see, when you click on this little uh, character figure, it will give you the personal settings where you can make adjustments to all of your uh, settings for your account. We've got uh, passwordless sign in. We also have two factor authentication, which we can set up right here. You can also set up hardware security key, which is a very good way of doing it as well. But we're just going to go through the motions for the verification code OTP here, which is what we're going to be setting up. But you do have some op other options available for security sign in here. So let's go ahead and click on this one here. And all this will do is basically open up a window asking you to put in your password. And then you just go through the steps on how you want to set up your two factor authentication whether it be on Google Authenticator or another type of email or whatever it is you want to use. Next up, we're going to go to this area inside Login Portal. It is automatically redirect HTTP connections to HTTPS from DSM Desktop. Now, it's also advisable to change the two ports here, DSM port HTTP and also DSM port HTTPS, because these are default ports and they are well known or hackers and you might want to change these to something else. Just change these two ports that are not being used, maybe 5011 and 5021, and that should be perfectly fine. You want to enable that. We also need to sort out that certificate, which is expired. And I can do that by just resetting the certificates. And this will give me two uh, new certificates for this particular device. So that's important that we use uh, this. Uh, right up here. So you can go here and you can renew all your certificates here. And this will give us a, a new certificate which we'll be able to use. And you'll see it will go from red to green. And that means we've got two new certificates uh, ready for us. So once we've done all of this, it's important that you get updates. So in your update and restore section, you need to go for your DSM updates and make sure that you're using the very latest version. Make sure you're uh, NAS is kept up to date all the time because this is updating security patches and other vulnerabilities that might be found on your NAS. And if you don't keep it update, just like Windows, 
you're going to be vulnerable. So just make sure that you keep this updated and you can set up a time when you want to have this downloaded and updated automatically. Uh, maybe when you're a bed or something like that and you're not using it, but you can download it here, which I'm going to do. And then what we're going to do is once it's downloaded, we're going to update it ourselves here to get it up to date so we can then pass the security check, which I'll show you in a second. And this will run a check on the system. You can now see here, we've got update now. And uh, once we do this, it should give us a notice saying, uh, basically the system's gonna shut down and update. So let me go ahead and check mark this and click update. I'm gonna say yes here. And uh, it takes a bit of time to update and uh, you will see the update message come on the screen. And uh, this will mean that we're getting our DSM updated. And this is a Synology, but it will be similar to other NASs that you may be using. So always keep it updated. And it's one of those sort of things that the NAS sits on the side doing nothing and we completely forget all about it and keeping it updated and make sure that we're doing regular maintenance checks on it to make sure everything is working okay. So just make sure you do these checks on a regular basis. Once you've done your DSM uh, update, you can then run the security advisor. You can run this at the beginning. It's probably more advisable. And it will say, are you running this for home or personal use? It's always advisable to go do this for work and business because this is a much more extensive check. And it will run a scan on your system and tell you what needs to be fixed or updated or checked. So go through this and let it run. You can see a bunch of ones coming up in red and you can then click on these and it will take you to that location where you can make changes to the system. It's pretty straightforward and it's a really cool way of keeping your system updated and fully working in the way it should do. You can see malware system account network and update. It will give you a full list of stuff that you can work through. When you click on them, it will tell you that there's a bunch of stuff here and you can click on this and you'll see the red little triangle. You can click on this one here and it will take you to that location where you can basically fix it. So I'm gonna work my way through these and uh, once I've done all these, I'll run another check. You can see here, it will take me to this location I can click on the control panel here and it will take me straight there where I can make changes to what it wants to me to make changes on. You can see it's asking me to make a change to this SMB section here. And if you read the description, it says go into advanced and inside here, it says set it to client defined basically. So enable server sign in and you don't want to put it on force, you want to put it on uh, client defined. And once you've done this, you can save this setting and that security feature has now been changed. This is how Synology does their security features. You can run that uh, security advisor and it will take you to this location. Once you've done this, you can then click on these and it will take you to the place where it says passwords, just like so. We can go right here and it wants us to enable a bunch of these settings, i.e. include mixed case, include uh, numeric uh, characters, also include special characters and also uh, common passwords. You can put this up exactly how you can see here. Put the check marks in and run the check, and that uh, warning will go away. So you want to check mark all of these really, and then you can also set the length of password that you require, i.e., say 11, and then you can make this exactly how you want it. So, what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to do a bunch of these little checks here and finish this off. You can see I've changed the port number on the uh, account here. I'm just going to run a bunch of checks here and run through this. And uh, what I've done is once I've got this done, I'll run another security check to make sure everything is fixed that they want me to fix in this uh, NAS. And hopefully all of these security settings will be changed. Yours are going to be different to mine. So that's why I've not gone through it all. But once I've done this check, you can see now it's coming up with a good clean bill of health. It means I've checked all of these security features and everything is working how it should be. Yours might be different and your settings will be different to mine, but just make sure that you run all of these checks and you should be up and running with a nice and secure network attached storage device that keeps you safe from uh, would-be hackers. Anyway, I think that's gonna be about it. So I hope this video has been some use to you with these security tips. If you have purchased the NAS and you've got it set up, then you want to make sure that you run through all of these security checks on your NAS and make sure that you've got all of the requirements that your manufacturer 
for your NAS is asking you to do, and that way it will keep you safe. Anyway, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Quick shout out to my YouTube members. I appreciate the support, and I shall catch you in the very next video. Bye for now. Thank you.